Well, hey, everyone. It's Tuesday again, and I pray that you're having a great start to the week. Uh, we do have a praise God. Alan had a surgery yesterday and all went well, and he was able to go home yesterday afternoon. So continue to pray that recovery is quick and that he can return to his normal schedule very, very soon. Also, remember to keep Shelton Faust in your prayers as he will be leaving for Spain this next uh, this next Sunday. Uh, he will be gone for six weeks. It's a school study abroad program, I'm quite sure. But Shelton is currently a student at Texas Tech, and we're just uh, excited for uh, this special endeavor that he gets to take. So keep him in your prayers. Also, the House family was able to lay Mary to rest at the National Cemetery yesterday in, in Santa Fe. Now, I think everything went very well. I, if there was a complaint, it would have it would have been the wind. Boy, we've had our share of that. But the staff at the National Cemetery, uh, as well as French's, they just do a great job honoring all those who are buried there. And all you moms out there, I pray you had a wonderfully blessed day this past Sunday. As Jerry Patton would have said, and I'm going to use it a little bit differently, he was always referring to us husbands talking to our wives. But now I'm going to talk to all of us uh, referencing our mothers. Uh, be sure and tell your mother, thank you for being your gift from God. Uh, one other thing to be mindful of in prayer is, is the fire situation. It is not getting any better to continue to pour your heart out for God to intervene with rain. It is most certainly a dire circumstance for so many people in these, uh, you know, in, that are close to these fires. Hey, the cafe class closed out the second letter to Timothy this past Sunday. That would have been 2 Timothy chapter 4. And at this point, you know, Paul, at the end of chapter 3, he'd made it very clear our responsibility as Christians to know God's word. It is God's inspired words to all humanity, and it can be completely 100% trusted. Now, our responsibility is to read and apply it to our lives. I mean, the Word of God is our standard for testing everything else that claims to be true. It is our safeguard against the lies of the world, those false teachers, those false hopes that are put out there by the world every single day. It is the only source of truth that reveals how one can be saved, saved for an eternity, and that is that life beyond this realm. Now, this last chapter of 2 Timothy, uh, it reveals a side of Paul we don't see probably anywhere else. It reveals Paul's flesh. I mean, he was most certainly, yes, a very, very strong Christian. But you know what? He was a human being. He had fears, frustrations. He had insecurities at those moments in life when it was th throwing its hardest punches at him. Now, Paul had used some of the same words we see, see here at the beginning of chapter 4, uh, some of the same words that he had used at the end of his letter, uh, his first letter to Timothy. But here he includes some things that weren't in the previous letter. He makes some references to judgment and to Christ's return. And I mention that because Paul may very well be thinking of his own judgment as he seems to sense that he is nearing his last days and knowing he too will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Let me read just a little that shows a side of Paul that we don't see anywhere else in his ministry. Paul's heart is, it is wide open for all to see. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, I'm just going to read verses 9 through 18. He says, do your best to come to me soon, for Demas, uh, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Cretans has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful for ministry. Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. And when you come, bring the cloak that I left <clears throat> with Carpus at Troas, also the books and Above all, the parchments. Alexander the carp, carp, uh, excuse me, Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Beware of him yourself, for he strongly opposed our message. In my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me the mes message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. 
so I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. You know, in this text, you can't miss Paul's sense of urgency conveying that, you know, Timothy, come, come soon. Paul senses, I think, his uh, execution is probably imminent, and, and we know that it was. And the Roman judicial system, uh, you know, it often had some pretty long delays in its processes. But once again, you can't miss Paul's feelings here. He's he's lonely, he's isolated, and and of course, he, he requests Timothy, you know, come and come soon. Even though Paul had the assurances of eternal life and confidence in Christ, uh, wow, this loneliness and isolation, it was having a devastating effect on his life. Paul needed visitors. Paul needed reassurance from fellow Christians. He just needed the practical comfort of warm clothing and familiar books. You see, Paul was no different than you and I. And this is a great reminder to all those Christians, all of us, that we we know that are out there that may be alone and isolated themselves due to due to their age, uh, illness. Maybe it was the death of a spouse. We could go on and on with the different scenarios that change one's life circumstances, and they do so in an instant. But we can never allow ourselves to overlook their needs for encouragement and just practical help uh, that we might bring to them to ease their burdens, uh, whether they be physical or spiritual. You know what? They're both important. Each of us has a responsibility. Uh, we have opportunities to encourage those whom God has, you know, called into a place that may be isolated, may be lonely, uh, sometimes even dangerous. And when I say that, I'm thinking about mission fields that are anything but safe. There's so much that can and should be done. We just have to be looking for these opportunities and go through those doors when they're open. Hey, thanks for tuning in this evening and uh, pray that you have a blessed rest of the week. And remember, uh, before you lay your head down tonight, uh, pray for rain for this state. Hey, thank you. Have a blessed rest of the week.